Now what I want to show you guys here is in this first case study is there's a pattern here that you can see in a lot of tables. Now I've, I've changed the names of these tables to protect the innocent, but this is exactly a pattern that I got off of a client's system. And what we saw here in this pattern was that there was 877,000 user seeks on one of the non-clustered indexes. But then there was also, oops, I always forget how to make squares when it comes to zoom it. Uh, there's also 877,000 lookups on that table. And so there's a, a really nice correlation between these two. And as an audience member, you're probably thinking, hey, this doesn't happen that many times in production. And you know, this is a pattern that I'm just making up. No, this, this I see all the time, where you've got some sort of non-clustered index. And in this case, it was actually, actually unique, so it made it even easier to take a look and see what the problem was. And in this case, what the problem is, is really that the column that you're using every single time, whenever you're accessing this data, is not what you're clustered on. And you're actually clustered on the wrong columns. Now, I don't have the columns in here. And you would want to take a look at them because it could be that this non-clustered index, index has, you know, you know, maybe it's 14 different columns. In that case, you probably wouldn't want to cluster on it. But if it's a narrow, if it's a narrow index, and you've got this kind of a correlation, what you're going to want to take a look at is whether moving the clustered index is a way to solve this problem. And as you can also see here. You know, the, the, the cluster index itself is hardly ever used except for the user lookups. Now, from a second scenario, another scenario that I see quite a bit is where you end up getting a lot of user seeks, oops, a lot of user seeks on the non-cluster indexes. And maybe there's one that's a little bit higher than the most than most. But it's kind of distributed amongst all of those. Now in this kind of a scenario, there is kind of two ways that you can look at it. One is you can consider the fact that there's very few user seeks and very few scans. And in this case, it might be good to move the clustered index then to the, to the second index. But you're going to want to take a little bit of a deeper look. Look at what the columns are. Oops. But it is possible that you would want to move the clustered index. And then maybe add additional columns into the other indexes for included columns. But what you're going to key on here is looking for the, the user lookups, the non the non-clustered index that gets the majority of the seeks and then compare that to the seeks and the scans for the cluster index. And for a third kind of case study, and before anyone checks my math, I will tell you that that number is wrong. But sometimes when you look at your seeks, in this case we got 1.4 million, and you look at your lookups, which are at 1.5 million, now you still have an excessive number of seeks. I mean an excessive number of lookups compared to your seeks because that number is still higher. But it's not that much higher. And in the case where it's not that much higher and the non-clustered indexes, the seeks on those don't exceed the number of seeks on the clustered index, you're not going to want to move the, the clustered index or not likely going to want to what you're going to want to do is find out what additional columns need to be added to these indexes so that the seeks no longer, the lookups no longer happen. And this is what I mean when I'm talking about the lookup and bounds. You want to look at where there's excessive number of lookups and take a look at the seeks on the clustered index and then the seeks on the non-clustered indexes to find out where you can address this. Now, of course, this works a lot better if I can actually show you guys a demo. And so I'm going to show you a demo that's got some tools in it that you can use to dig in 
and find out what exactly is going on with your indexes. So let me uh, jump over to Management Studio here. And we'll start with this first demo here. Let me just increase the uh, size of the font here. I know it's pretty easy to zoom in with uh, GoToMeeting, but I can make it even easier so fewer people need to do that. So I'm going to start with the AdventureWorks database 2012. And then I'm going to run this SQL statement 50 times. And I'm using an exact SQL statement so that I can throw this into an, a temp table and not have to fill the page up here with tons of results. So let me just run through that. And that doesn't take any time at all. And we'll take our, our, our look at this case, this, uh, this, this one example. And so what I'm just going to do is I'm going to go to Index Usage Stats. And Index Usage Stats is a DMV that provides a list of all of the times where an index was used in an execution plan. In this case, we're only caring about user plans, but it does also give you the last date in which these occurred, the times where the system was doing additions to that. For, for, for this scenario, we only care about whether or not it's a user seek. So let's run this again. We'll bring up the results. And if we take a look at the results here, we're going to see that lookup pattern where we've got the steaks on the non-clustered index, and then we've got the lookups on the clustered index. And we've got that really tight relationship there. And if you take a look at your indexes that you have in production right now, you will find, I can virtually guarantee you that unless you're really good at maintaining your indexes, that you're going to find this kind of pattern somewhere. Maybe not exactly, maybe it's 51 lookups and 50 seeks, and there's a lookup from somewhere else. But you're going to see this out there, and that's going to be there 